All right, same scale, it's October 26, 23. All right, let's see. Okay, so one thing I wanted to comment on is, um, I, mean, I think this is pretty much resolved now, but I, I think this is just important to point out. There was um, a PR here that was introduced and um, <clears throat> as part of the um, pull request, we're, we're going to be streaming the guest serial logs. And um, this has additional overhead. And what ended up happening was the, um, uh, in order to get the density test to pass, the performance test to pass, um, Simone had to lower the VM count from 100 to 90 because it didn't fit in the uh, the memory foot the memory amount didn't fit in the amount that we assigned to the job because essentially this PR um, I mean it has it has additional memory overhead and we were going over so we caught it this is good um, we we don't want to do this we don't want to reduce the uh, the VM count in the job we we just want to um, we just want to show that the this feature has increased the amount of memory per VMI. And so that's what um, eventually Simone did and he has it here covered. So this adds um, a decent amount of overhead per VMI. And this is behind a feature flag. So um, for people who can't afford to pay this 35 meg price to get the guest serial logs, this can be turned off. So this is good. I mean, this is a huge win for us in terms of tracking performance over time. Um, we've had a few of these over the last few releases, but um, this was the most recent example that we had caught wind of. So um, this was good. We'll have this in the release note now so that we can have everyone aware that this is what, um, this is something that is changing across releases. I think this is in, um, let me see, I believe it was um, merged into V11. Oh, it's in the main, yeah. So it'll be in V1, oh, sorry, V12. Uh, this will come out. So it's just something we're gonna have to be aware of. But um, so anyway, this is this is good for, our, this shows what, um, what our job is meant to do or one of the things it's meant to do. So this is really good to see. So um, Ryan, I had a question for this. Uh, usually, it's good that this is behind a feature flag, so people uh, who want to be aware of that memory footprint, they can uh, turn it off. But usually feature flags are meant to go from alpha, beta, and eventually be removed. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that the plan for this feature as well? Because I can see value in keeping that feature flag alive even if the feature goes to uh, uh, beta and GA. Yeah, eventually. certainly. Yeah, I know. I So I don't think this this went through the process. So there is a design document for it. I don't know. Um, I don't know what the process that went through. I didn't review it. So uh, I don't know how this was being proposed in terms of like it's... Um, you know, it's roll out for being GI. So I I guess like I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not sure. I guess we will have to keep an eye yeah. out for it. I, I this is a good thing for the for the API group though. I, I think I wish I had his wish whatever one his um his design document PR was, but this would be exactly the kind of thing we'd want to cover when when SIG API is reviewing either the PR or the um the design. Yep. Yeah, I think this is one of the examples we should definitely bring up in that uh, feature yeah. flag evol evolution uh, brainstorming session. Okay. Yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Okay. Um, all right, what else? So we had um, an open question about the dedicated cluster. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I've got 126.9. For some reason, um, my memory is telling me we recently to 127 oh okay okay so no, no, yeah this is correct okay so it's it's dedicated cluster is 126.9 brian did the upgrade and then um when the new 
OpenShift releases, he said he's going to upgrade it again to 127. So we'll get the new versions. Um, well, I think this should follow pretty closely with Qvert. Um, uh, I think all we just need to do, I think this as a learning from last time, is whenever we see the, the um, we or we just need to talk to Daniel, and whenever he does the the upgrades for the jobs, we we want to have the um, we want to have all of our jobs included, included the dedicated cluster as part of the upgrade to the new um, Kubernetes version. Yeah. Um, so do you know when this was upgraded like a week or a couple of weeks back? Uh, I think it was, let's say, um, so the 17th, around the 17th. Okay. So yeah, a little so, week, um, a little over a week ago. Yeah. Um, okay. I I think so one thing like I'll walk through that uh, later on in today's agenda, but I'm not sure if the upgrade made difference to the performance numbers. We we can dig into that a little bit. Okay. Okay. Okay, next. Um All right, so this was now to get everything scraping correctly on the new version. Looks good, so we merged. All right, so now we've got our numbers, right? So, well, let's get to this. I mean, this is basically the same thing, right? We want, we need to have our numbers for one one. One one's gonna be going out the door soon in the next few weeks. And right, it was based on 127. So do you wanna review these today or anything you wanna cover here? Sure, yeah. So if you can open the three links, uh, so I want to give a context about uh, how these numbers were uh, uh, like plotted. So what happened was we switched providers halfway through somewhere around September 6th. We went from one point, yeah, right around that time, uh, 1.25 to 1.27 and you can notice that difference in that 1.25 was scattered over from 17 all the way to a uh, little over 20. But 1.27 is giving a very nice uh, plot with, with very concentrated numbers. And that means that our averages they tend to increase. Uh, I mean, the the performance in terms of average increased uh, for the better. Uh, going back to how they were plotted. So because we ma made this switch, uh, the tool the the tool churns the number into two directories based on the job results. So what I had to do was copy over into a temporary directory and then run the plot on that uh, temporary directory and then remove uh, the temporary directory. So I just kept the, the graphs. Uh, so for now, we have the graphs for V1 in order to keep, uh, in order to not have duplicate data, have not uh, you know, uh, kept all of this data in one directory, but it's parsed across uh, 1.25 and 1.27 uh, release directory. Okay. Yeah, and I I think I initially anticipated that this will take a lot of, uh, this will cause a lot of problems, but because we have all the tools and the commands uh, decoupled, uh, it was actually not that bad, was able to uh, plot it nicely. Great. So yeah, that's an overview. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I like these tighter, tighter groupings. This is this is all a good sign. Cool. Yeah, we'll have to just continue to watch this as the um. And I mean, we've only had about a little over a month and a half of data here, so it seems like we're starting to get a trend line for this stuff. So, which is all looking really good. I mean, tight bunch and and trending down. Yeah. So, uh, one more thing to note was uh, in that PR where we changed the performance test from 100 to 90, was it mm -hmm. for the end-to-end -end, uh, SIG performance or the dedicated cluster? I think um, I 
let's see, test performance density. This is the, um, this looks like the dedicated this one, is, right? This is the, all right, check. I don't remember. Where is this? Okay, it's um test performance density, but there's like there's two of them, I forget. So it's okay, so test performance and density, and then the other one is in no no, it's not here, it's in hack. And there's two performances, perf tests and perf scale tests. Okay, let's see which one does. One of them should call the load generator, the other one shouldn't. I think I think it's the um I think it's not the dedicated cluster because How many VMs is it launching? It should, this should tell us it's a hundred, right? Yeah, so this is, yeah, this is the, um, this is the, the periodic, or not the periodic, the one we run on um, after each PR. Got it, okay. So this uh, should be reflected in the end-to-end -end SIG performance uh, jobs. Yeah. And this was merged. Um see so good. The date for this stuff. This was July it merged. Um what's the date on this thing? So three weeks ago it merged. And then um he fixed it. Um Oh wait, so this isn't um so okay, yeah, this so this is on main branch too. So wait, it's not gonna be here. Oh uh, actually the main was tracking the release v1, right? So this when is when was all it main... cut? I haven't is it so when was it cut? Has it not been cut yet? Oh uh, it so regardless of when was like the branch being cut is a different uh problem, right? Because we run all our tests on main anyway. Right. Um, but yeah. your, um, but your, um, your metrics here are from, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. So we don't, oh, that's right. We don't actually run any on release one, one PRs. That's right. Okay. I got it. Okay. So yeah, then, so what did I say? That was three weeks ago. So, I mean, it yep. was about, um, In yeah, September. Beginning of October. Right? Yeah, right around Two here. Weeks. Yeah. We have no data. I don't know. I I don't know. This was uh I don't know. I mean I don't know how to explain this gap here of two weeks, but maybe so that gap uh, likely means that we had failures in CI. Yeah. So if we have failure, then we don't uh have data represented here. At least right. that's I mean, what was happening in the past. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't know, like, I don't know specifically what was causing the failure. I wonder if, like, um, I mean, because this PR technically fixed it. Maybe, maybe it didn't. I mean, maybe it just, maybe it, with a 90, it was barely passing and it was causing a bunch of intermittent failures. And then maybe that would yeah. explain it. I, so I don't we, know. I mean, we're just guessing, you, but yeah. Can you go to that uh, pro job? Uh, uh, summary link that we have. Uh, we can quickly check uh, if it was indeed failure or not.
Those are on our periodics. Yeah. Ah, well, this is the pool. Uh, we should look for periodics, right? Oh, you need the period. Okay, so. Oh no, we do have success. Oh, what? what happens during this time? <laughs> I don't know it. Could it be that uh, the report just didn't run? Like we did not collect all the periodics uh, results and updated it to GitHub? No, no, that was running. But you see that why it wasn't even run. Yeah, that wasn't even run. I don't know. Maybe something was wrong with the test infrastructure during this time. Maybe timeout. That could be it. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what this is. I don't know why that's. I don't know what's going on here with this. Well, I don't know. It came back in ten nineteen. I don't know what what changed from here to here, but sorry, we eventually got the data. Okay. Well, I'm not. I'm not sure how to analyze that, but we have. Um. I mean, anyway, like I think. I think what's at least clear is like we're gonna get. From this change, we'll get back to 100, and we caught the we caught the um, the performance change in memory addition per VMI, and then we now and then at 127. I mean, this seems pretty good as a trend line. I mean, we're using. The, I'm like, it's almost surprising. I mean, look how tightly grouped these are. I mean, that's incredibly consistent. Yeah, I mean, and even in the P95, even... I mean, very consistent. And the other thing is that before that change uh, went in, you see that there are few uh, observations in the zero, uh, likely timing out. Yeah. And then after that increase in memory, there is no uh, observation with um, zero value. So likely our estimations got better regarding the, the memory utilization. Okay. Interesting. It's a pretty good improvement. I mean, this is almost ten seconds on the P ninety five. Yeah. Two or three seconds on the P fifty. Pretty good. <clears throat> okay. Um. So I I I think you saw. Like, I added a comment about this in the um in the V one one release that. But you'll see a just based on our observations, you'll see a slight improvement. I mean, just because of the, I mean, these groupings are just much better. So, I mean, I feel confident that something is happening here. We don't know exactly what, but something with one twenty seven seems to be helping us out here. Yeah. So that's another thing I wanted to discuss today is okay. when we release those benchmark numbers, right? Uh, should we try to be consistent with the Kubernetes releases? Because um, the reason why I bring this up is, remember, we we were trying to think about perfect scale as uh, different parameters that could affect this. One of them is Kubernetes version. The other mm -hmm. is the hardware where we run on. The other is Kubert version, which uh, folks run on, right? And the benchmarks, Define are defined for the Kubert version, but so for for example, this V1 release, right? We change it halfway through, so there is a chance of uh, some kind of ambiguity where we don't uh, specify. Like we we need to point out that there is a change in uh, Kubernetes version 
which has caused this somewhere in our communication. Yeah. So what you're saying is amazing. Is what you're saying that we need to be clear that this is this drop doesn't have to do with the change we merged in Hubert. That is is was done right. by something in Kubernetes version change. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't, I, I don't feel like. I mean, we didn't talk about ruling this out because the date lined up pretty spot on. I mean, like I think the what was this September fourth. What yeah, the, the that change was like... March on September 6th that I checked okay. for sure. Yeah, so we've got 4th and then here's the next one we run as the 11th. 4th, 11th, yeah. So I, I mean, I don't know, I feel pretty confident that's what it is and kind of, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, we can do a quick no, look. No, I... And, I think I agree with you. I'm also confident that it's that. The only uh, question I have is how do we effectively communicate this to the community, right? Because graphs don't do justice in communicating this version change. All you can see in the graph is just a, a drop down and high consistency after that. So uh, we need to say somewhere that because of this, Kubernetes version change, we saw an increase in, uh, well, we saw better performance and it had nothing to do with changes in Qpart. Well, I mean, and, I, and, I think we just say it. I think yeah. just the way you said it, I think that's that's fine. Um, I think as long as we communicate it like that, I think that's perfect. I mean, I, we should include the diagrams. I think because, because I think we're going to anyway, right? I mean, we should probably include them every release. I think the, um, what would be nice is um, when we make our statement. I mean, I, I mean, I can do a little screenshot of like just this area right here. You can see like maybe I can add like some tags in here. This should be a way to do it. I think right. Compare data, however, not if you can. But I thought there's some way. Anyway, you could probably come up with some way to do tags, and then we can probably just point out pretty clearly like what is going on here. Yeah. Oh, you can't really see it when it's zoomed in. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I I I think that I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. I like because we're gonna have the diagrams anyway, and that's probably the simplest way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a good point though. So I I'll just make sure this is covered in the in the notes for this. So, all right. Um. What else do we have? Uh... So uh, one thing to talk about is uh, if you go to the third link, which is the density, performance density uh, test. Yeah, um, that one, this one. Okay. Uh, so, so you said the upgrade was done a little over a week ago, right? October yeah. 16th. Yeah, I think even here we are seeing a little bit of better performance uh, after the upgrade. Yeah, the trend looks okay. We we don't have a lot of data. Yeah, we just have a week of data. So maybe yeah. in two weeks, it, this would be a good thing to check out. But at least initial trend looks like we did a little bit of improvement uh, yeah. from the previous numbers on, on the 1.26 uh, upgrade. Yeah, I think so too. You know, it's funny. So here, uh, going back to what we were just saying about the um, performance improvement to 127, right? We should see it here. If it was Qbert, we don't. No, this is this is the, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Because here, everything is same, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah makes sense. So that would be another point in the, in the Kubernetes column. 
Yeah, so we'll wait and see. I think I, I, I tend to agree. This looks like it's trending down. So we'll have to, let's give it some more time. Let's see what happens. Okay. So uh, last time for the release, we did uh, documentation to publish uh, these release benchmarks. Uh, yeah. I think we might, we should do that this uh, this release as well, right? Uh, yeah, it will be a I small agree. post yeah, in the docs uh, explaining these numbers. Yep. For some reason, I can't. Why can't I use my, I can't type. <laughs> I can't type in the document there. Hold on. Oh. I don't know what's going on. Oh, because I was signed out. That's why. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can type now. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So yeah, we need our document. So we need our um V1. This is, uh, let's go to our example because, um, so what we did last time, this is in, um, and V1, right, we did, we have this. So, so what do you think? Like we have something similar, we have V1, one performance scale data, right? We create a new directory. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then was there another piece of this? We've got, um, what was the, um, the piece that explains is it the same? I, I think this is it. Here it is. Yep. Yeah. So how should we do this? So we've got, this is in the top level directory, release V1 performance scale best benchmarks. So, okay, this is actually handy because we've got, this is like our readme of like what you're looking at. Should we just add on here? What do you think? Like, should we just add on below? Should we do like a comparison? Should we, cause like, I think what I, at least what I like is like this part is important to explain for a context. And the part we're changing is here or you have these things, right? So yeah. what do you think? Like, should we do a, should we add on? Should we do like a compare? I wonder if there's a way to like put them side by side. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> that would be cool. I don't know if we've got to fit on the page yeah. though. Well, I don't know if we can put it side by side, but definitely top and bottom we can do Actually, that. you know what? You know what? So think of it. Wait, wait what about this? So we've got so this the, our graphs here include v1, right? It's just that we just need to mark when v1 and v11 is, right? Because this is the same. It's it's the same thing. We just were. I mean, we're like the graph shifts right, but like we no longer have December in here, but we don't really yeah. care. Right, so if we 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 just have our um, our marker somewhere, like if we can add like a label in here that says like V one, well I don't know what V one like over here I don't know like a little label that says V one, and then V one one or something, well maybe we've got it over here like if we had V one here, V one one here or something, and so that then then we just have one graph that we update or yeah. the up we for each of them and then we just have different labels that we move. Is that possible? Yeah. I don't know what, how does that work with Plotly? I don't know if that's hard to do or not. Yeah, I don't know top of my mind. I'll have to uh, look into it if um, we can tag. Uh, so I think what we should look at is tagging on that graph based on the date, right? Then yeah. And I think I think what we should do is uh, in that document that you mentioned, uh, I think there are two separate sections, right? How to interpret the data and mm -hmm. the data for specific release itself. So I believe there is value in uh, putting different graphs in different uh, readmes. So somebody who wants to look at V1, they come here. Somebody who wants to look at V11, they go to a different page. But then from those page, tag 
uh, how to interpret data in a separate doc. So basically what I'm saying is, would it make sense if we take all of the text uh, above, uh, put it in a different doc and link it, and then put the interpretation of specific release here. So for example, this V1 did not have a provider switch, but V11 has a provider switch. So we need to add a blur for that. Uh, and that's why to me a different uh, page for V1 and V11 makes sense. So we can add like really specific context below that graph. Well, there there should be a provider switch in V1. I just don't, it was probably, yeah, there there should there was still a provider switch. It's just I don't think it was visible, you know, like performance no. wise. No, no, no. I am not sure. Uh, so if we do a provider switch, there would be a change in job name, right? Uh it would go to periodic say periodic E to E one point two three uh performance and then it will go to one point two five performance. Uh, so there will be a change in job name. And I know for sure that I did not change that job name. This is the first time I'm doing that. Uh, so Yeah, uh, you know what? You're right. Because we, th so there was a provider provide switch for Qvert's jobs. We didn't, it was to 126, but we stayed on 125, right? I think it's what yeah, our, our we it. didn't plot it. Yeah, that's right. We didn't plot it. So that's that's what happened. We were we stayed behind. Okay, so um, where where was I? Uh, yeah. So we don't we don't yeah. Okay, it wasn't on our plots, but it was with Kubert's testing. Okay, I think maybe um, I need to think about that because like we uh, that is an important part certainly of our context. I mean, I guess what we could do, like in our on our metrics here, like we can be like this whole thing was on one twenty five, you know. Here's the one twenty seven switch and the V one switch. Uh, I'm just trying to think. How can we prevent from overcomplicating this? Because we um, do you have anything in here about um, about kind of the context of how we measure? Is it like I, I think the context is just uh, what test we do. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, the data okay, is the go. first yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Okay, you got it right there. Yeah, so 125. Okay. So, okay. We have it there. Okay, so there we go. So we can... Um, I gotta think about it. So like, here's like your idea about having them as separate documents and then having the context in each of them uh, could work. My only concern with it is like this document right now, ha having sort of one source of truth is really nice as a as an interface. I don't know if um, now while there it would be nice to have like the the context would be definitely easier if we had two different ones. So I guess it's just a matter of like I see, I see. I, guess I how, think how I can. I think we can come up with a middle path, right? So, uh, usually, uh, when we see a document like this, there is some kind of an uh, summary links on the top. So mm -hmm. we can link these section on the top in. Uh, in a row basis where first row is background, how to interpret the numbers, then release V1 uh, link, then release V11 link. So everything becomes one document, but if somebody is specifically interested in looking at V1 or V11 number, they can just click there and go to that section. Okay, so then this, what this is like, um, this is like an index then. Yeah. So we get rid of this, we get rid of these diagrams and we move them into one of these subdirectories like V1, one per scale data or something that has the details. No, I, I think I so like your it. idea of putting it only in this document. What I was saying is just have an index at the top 
So okay. if someone wants to jump to, let's say someone doesn't want to look at V1 and they want to lo go look at V11 directly, they can go from their index. Well, the, I guess the problem I'm having is like, if you look at this graph and you compare it to like this one, this one, I mean, if I'm looking at this and I think to myself, what is the difference between these two, right? I'm looking at the two, I'm like going back and forth and it's almost nothing, right? It's just like one month or a few months here, but like the trend, like it's really hard or it's really easy to get lost in like the fact that the trend line and all the data points, and there's a lot of data points, has been pretty mm -hmm. steady. And so like, if I am looking at this, I, I'm going to be going back and forth and it's, I'm going to see, okay, where is it? Where is the point that I go to V1? And I say, okay, well, looks like it's, they're missing June. So it must be, July onward here is my is my context. So I guess like what I'm saying is the I think it's hard to read without labels. Like I think these these are I think I think having yeah. one set of graphs is fine. We just add labels to them. The only thing we need to do here is explain. I think we just need to add more context about this first sentence here as to like, we change providers at some point during the, um, during our data collection, and that'll be noted in the graph. And that can, and that the, the version of Kubernetes can affect the overall performance. And, and so the, maybe the ones, the cases that they we label and they're like, here, we have a label, like a line at February, it says, well, it's gonna be back here. It'd be like December 125 provider, and then we have another line in May that says release V1. We've got a line in, uh, and then the next line would be, uh, well, we need this data. It would be in um, November that says release V11. And then we've got a line in September 23 that says provider Kubernetes 127, or we just say Kubernetes 127. And then it's super clear. Like it's really easy because now you can see, oh, okay, here's the data from V1 on Kubernetes 125, here's my data when on, on 125 with the V11 work, and then here's 127, right? It, it's, it, we draw the, it's really easy for the user to draw the conclusion themselves, which is that, which what we are gonna say in our, in our, you know, in our summary, which is that 127 had an impact. Yeah, makes sense. So the, the one, so I really like your idea of putting tags on this graph, but combining and having just one set of graphs has one more problem. So if you scroll down, right, uh, in this release, we saw an update in the patch power counts, and that's why we posted it here in this doc. Right. Uh, so that is specific to that release itself. Okay. And after that, like, yeah, we we are very consistent on that thread line. So I don't think it makes sense for us to publish this graph for release V11. Well, let's see. So, so we did, where's our, so our V1 is here. Yep. So during, so then that means before this is 059. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, this is V1. All this stuff was included in V1, so but you know way back here is zero five nine. So yeah. I mean, we'll just maybe we have a line that says zero five nine, a line that says V1. We've got V1 one here. I it, I think it still works. I think there's still value in here because you can see we we're, we're still want to do three over three releases. We can see that two releases ago the patch count increased and it remained consistent. Which is what we were looking for with some weird data here. I don't know what I don't know what this is, but the but the um, actually this looks like one twenty seven, right? This is right about one twenty seven. Yep. Look at the the <laughs> so we get a lot of uh, we get sparse data here, but then we get really tight data for the for the runtimes. That's weird, huh? But anyway, you can see here like there's another trend here. This is changing. Like the data points are kind of wild and. Um, now we can see it again. Yeah. So now this tells us the full picture. Before, during the V1 release, we increased our patch counts. That's our that's part of our story. 
during the V1 one release, we moved to Kubernetes 127 testing, and all of a sudden our patch counts are no longer as tight as they were, as consistent as they were during V1 yeah. or in 125. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think it still works. I, I think there's still value here. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think we can do that then. So I think what I'm hearing is that we add context about the provider change here. And then yeah. we explore if those graphs can have tags. And if we have tags, then we put all the relevant uh, version change or provider change information as tags on the graph and then re-upload the same graphs for, for the current release with past release markers. Yeah, with the new data, right? We have we include the new data yeah. and tags, and we but we keep the format of the document the same. We just maybe update our context. I think all we need to do is update number one. That, that's yeah. the only additional context. And then everything else stays the same. Yep. Okay. okay. I think we'll need a tracking issue for this. This has to go in. Like this should be backported to v11. I'll file file an issue after our call. Okay. Can we tell or what else? Is okay, so let's keep the same. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I think that'll work really nice. That this is going to help us scale. I think because, I mean, this is as long as it, this tagging, labeling part is an easy addition, then I think this will be really easy for us to do. An update. And I think we might also want to change the document name itself. So instead of the release specific for fan scale, like just yeah. make it for fan scale benchmarks. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. And I, I bet LA, if, if there's a way to do this tagging in Plotly, there's got to be a way like its API must support it. So I bet you we could at some point get this into the automation and have it do it for us, Yeah, which would be super yep. slick. That would be so cool <laughs> to see that yeah. on our on all of these. That would be awesome. So yeah, that, this is cool. That, this would be a nice feature. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, like, once we change the name of the document, we should probably also give the link of this document in the uh, blog post that Andrew was uh, discussing. Agreed. Sorry, I wonder if, if you want to have a version document. Or if you want to have a version uh, document of uh, the benchmarks tests, would you rather want to have it in the community repo? Yeah, um, it's an open item, uh, Lubo. I, I have a tracking issue for that. Uh, to port all of this documentation in uh, in the documentation so that it goes to the website. But mm -hmm. there seems to be a lot of organization, well, reorganization that needs to happen for that to go through. So that issue keeps falling off the radar uh, and other issue is taking uh, priority. But yeah, that's definitely in the to-do list. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's uh, it will be valuable, even if you have a block per release. That's uh, yeah something you you want to see probably per release. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
All right, I think we've got a plan. I think this is good. We've got um, we've got a few weeks to go for this. All right, is there anything else, Alea? Like we have, um, has everything merged? All the outstanding stuff you had for the automation, has that all merged? Are we all set there? Yeah. Until okay. now, everything is uh, merged. Okay. Uh, and it, unfortunately, we did not get a lot of features in this release. We were just uh, escaping, scraping through um, with the old automation. So I'll have to port all of the uh, tasks to post v11 release. Okay. Um, and yeah, scope it out next release. Okay. All right. Sounds good then. All right, I think we got a plan. Uh, the so I, I put the issue in the chat and if you can open that. Uh, Yes, so Lubo, the last section here is to add section for benchmarks in the uh, documentation or user guide. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah. 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 So yeah, Ryan, this is the list of items we still have. Uh, I think the first part is done. So we have CI taking care of uh, plotting, uh, that is done. But uh, remaining things are left over and we'll have to put it to next um, release. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Anything else? Uh, this is good. I think we got a plan here for V11, so feel good about that. Uh, what? Anything else that we want? So about V11, or do we have any other topics? No. No. This is good. Okay. Uh, anything? Anything from you, Lubo? Um, wanted to ask if we see any peak. Or increase in the in the runtime, still about you know, we, we, I'm a little bit uh, lost about the guest uh, console log PR. Um, from the tests, it seems that it takes like second or two uh, per VM more to actually launch. But if we don't see here anything that's uh, somewhat suspicious. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it. I mean, I was wondering because if you were seeing that and then we weren't, if it was, it wasn't enabled, but Simone said it's enabled by default. So, I mean, yeah. we're not seeing yeah. it. That's, um, yeah, weird. Um, maybe we could try to disable it for the performance job. Hmm. What do you say? To like disable the flag, see if it makes yeah. a difference. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we could try that. See if it makes any difference. I, mean, I think the, at least the main thing to me was the the memory increase. So I I don't know. It's hard to say. Like I we caught the memory increase, which was good. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if you're seeing one to two seconds, that's pretty significant. Um, I don't know what it would be hung up on. Is not just spawn another container? That's that seems really excessive. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I mean, we can try and disable it and see if we see a difference then. I don't know. I mean, we just don't see it here. Yep. It's, uh, it's quite, 
puzzling, I would say. Okay. All right. All right. I think then I don't think there's anything else then. All right, everyone. Thank you. We're close to V11. This should be exciting. We'll get everything out and tagged to V11 and our scale stuff will be as part of the release. Cool, guys. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Bye. See you. Bye. Yeah.